Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Oh. Well. We had the Beast Mortos and Roosh against the Outrunners. And you know what this was? Awesome. This was the same goddamn thing that WWE used to do all the time. And I would have these arguments with Dave every single time on the show. And he'd explain this or that and the other thing. And my point was always, why did you book this match? Yeah. It's a Beast Mortos and Roosh versus the Outrunners. And like, it's a fun match and all. Yes. It's good. The people fucking love the Outrunners. <laughs> the best part of the match is Turbo gets a hot tag. The plate's going nuts. He runs wild. They body slam Roosh. And they're going to go for the son of a bitch elbow. But this fucking Roosh is trying to get to his feet. Mm -hmm. And Turbo is screaming at the top of his lungs, Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Oh. And he finally hit the son of a bitch elbow. And then Drillistico tries some shit or something. They toss him out. They go to suplex Roosh. Drillistico grabs a fucking foot like Bobby Heenan and Rick Rude in The Ultimate Warrior. Mm -hmm. Roosh falls on top. They beat the Outrunners. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? What in the fuck are you doing? Why wow. did you beat the Outrunners? Why did you beat... Bo Why? Like, I get it. The Beast Mortos and Roosh, they're like a new group. Let's get them over. That's fine. There's a lot of teams. There's a lot of nothing happening teams in AEW. Tons of them. There's like 220 people on the roster or whatever. Why did you book them against the Outrunners and beat the Outrunners? The Outrunners are the hottest team in this company right now okay they've actually been that way for like six weeks now because six weeks ago we were saying you know what these guys are fucking over have them win and like push them and if it turns out that they don't get over or like they're not over anymore now you beat them dude they were the hottest act in seattle every single one of their fucking shirts sold out and by the way, after their shirt sold out, I went back to the the uh, like the like merch booth. There's like Darby Allen shit there. He's from fucking Seattle. Darby's shit didn't sell out, but the Outrunners shit sold out. They're fucking over. So why did you put him in a match with Beast Mortos and Rouge and beat them? I was fucking baffled. Baffled. Aghast. I don't understand it. I, I don't get it, dude. The only thing I can figure out is that they figured out that everyone thinks the Outrunners should beat the Bucks, but it's supposed to be private party, so we need to at least beat the Outrunners once, so now there's a reason that they're not getting the title shot. That's the only thing I can figure, because otherwise, this is a completely incompetent booking decision to yeah. beat the Outrunners right now. I, I was baffled. It was like halfway through it occurred to me one of these teams theoretically has to lose. Neither of them should. The Outrunners especially should not. They did. Match was really fun. And you the, the Outrunners are not just a comedy gimmick. They know how to work. Yep. They can have good wrestling matches. And granted, I mean, Roosh and Beast Mortars are awesome luchadors. But they're primarily luchadors. And uh, they, I was not certain this is going to be a good match going in. It was. It was very, very good. I thought the match was very good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too worried about the Outrunners long term. But what was going on with Drillistico and the green cord? He went to throw it in, but it like went into orbit. I, and then and then they start explaining the green cord Dr like it's some cannon. Drillistico, yeah. Drillistico, I, Drillistico had a strange night because there was the, 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 the thing with the cord. And then afterwards, because my thought was they that since the Outrunners lost here, maybe, well, maybe they'll get a rematch and get their win back and then go on to face the Bucks. But then I forgot about FTR. So, the, the the three members of LFI are beating up the two members of the Outrunners when the two members of FTR run out to make a four on three advantage baby faces. And they want to, they make the save and they want to end this schmoz with FTR hitting the shatter machine on Drillistico. And they want it bad. And Drillistico can not get in the right position. <laughs> and he, like, looks at Dax. Who's squatting and catches behind and they're ready to do the move. And he runs at Dax and locks up with him. And Dax is like, no, and punches him down. And so he gets up again. And Dax is like, come at me. And Delisco is not what to do. And finally, they grab Delisco's feet and pull him away. Dax was hot. 
Mm-hmm. Tox is very, very hot. So the feud for now is FT Runners. And this is they, they have shirts. They're going to be a thing for a while, I think. Having a four-on-three feud against LFI. Very strange. You don't see Jake being the fourth man? No. <laughs> you want to talk about a styles clash. <laughs> a contrast of styles going from Roosh to 2024 Jake Roberts. Not the same thing. Actually, Beast Mortars would be even more contrasting. Mm. Sammy Guevara video. He wants to go against the best. He has a picture from when he was a kid with a blonde-haired Shelton Benjamin. He wants to challenge Shelton Benjamin on Dynamite. I do not like his odds. Moxley's crew versus Top Flight. Yeah. For the trio's titles. I suppose technically it was a titles match. They destroy these geeks. Slaughter, 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 slaughter. This is almost exactly my recap, word for word. (laughs) They murdered them. They killed them. They destroyed them. They murdered them, and then they won. They, 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 got, no. a, they got a little bit of a, they killed a, them. a shine there. It was not 100 to 0, but it was like 95 to 5. Yes. So, sure. pack one with a tombstone. We can write off type flight and challengers now, or, or as a, a team that might get elevated with this program. They're still geeks. Little did I know what was to come. Yeah. <laughs> So Moxley and Marina join in. Leo Rush and Leo the Grey run out. They're killed. That's the point where Collision ends. And then we watched AEW Battle of the Belts October 19th, 2024. The Dark Order runs in with a steel chair. They're still killed. And I wrote down, if this is supposed to make me want to see MCC versus Dark Order, it is failing. And as I write that, Mox says... Let's do a title match right now. Yeah. Uh, are you fucking serious? Yes. Moxley's well, crew versus the Dark Order. In a title match. In a title match. It is a massacre. It yes. is a slaughter. Lots of murder going on. It is a humiliation. Reynolds gets a hot tag and is coming back as best he could while still selling his taped up ribs. He gets press gut bustered by uh, Claudio. Won't go up to the sharpshooter. So they cheat just because they can and packed as like a foot stomp. And then Reynolds taps out. Complete and utter destruction. You know what? I would bet that uh, there are a lot of AEW fans who don't like this one bit, which is why I like it. Sure. Because this is not how AEW normally books. This was not. Cash, Wheeler, and Pac are obviously beating Top Flight, but we're going to give Top Flight 50%. They're going to run wild, can do some cool shit and some near falls and everything like that. And then they're going to win, but then the Dark Order is going to come out. And man, we're going to have a banger. We're going to do some great spots. Fucking Alex Reynolds and and uh and what's his face? They make a great nope, nothing. Nothing. The story is the BCC are the baddest dudes around and you fuckers are not at their level. Yep. And that's it. And you're going to get killed. And they're going to kill people and they're going to murder them until finally some people start to step up. I like this a lot. Because it is very different. And let's be honest, Johnny Hungy needed to be killed for that ridiculous <laughs> chase last week. I have not felt my, sympathy for Johnny Hungy in years. My goodness. Well, speaking of him, they smashed his arm with a briefcase afterwards. Private Party and Garcia finally arrived. Everyone flees. Where the hell were you guys this whole time? It was like 15 minutes that you could, could have showed up himself, but you didn't. And then after the smoke is cleared, the dust is settled. Then Orange Cash, he pokes his head out and he just leaves. Still very reluctant. Because he's not an idiot. <laughs> is that? He's back there with these dorks. He knows there ain't no hope right now. People need to step up. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.